Right, hi. This one is, um, again, we're going to put a background in, but this time we're going to use some cling film. So before you start, I'd recommend that you get yourself a piece of cling film ripped off ready and get your paints mixed up. Now, on this one for the background, I'm using cadmium orange. I'm using um, some burnt sienna. A dark green which I've mixed from hooker's green with a touch of burnt sienna in it and a little bit of ultramarine blue and then ultramarine blue as it as it comes so we're going to do this as a wet in wet on the background and um, yeah we're going to make a start now obviously you can see that I've already put my drawing in it's been masked out, it's all dry, it's ready to go. So you need to do all that before you ever start painting. You can just play with the background and not worry about putting the flowers in and then make something afterwards. But we have another video on that coming up shortly. So um, yeah, so join me and uh, enjoy yourself. So I'm... Um, I haven't changed my water it's slightly dirty as you can see hopefully that means you can see it i'm getting the paper quite wet now you do i would say you want this slightly wetter than maybe you would normally for a wet on wet because when you put your cling film on your pave paint must still be really wet so anyway i've put my first layer of water on you can see it, it's quite dirty. And I'm going to give that literally about four or five seconds just to soak into the surface of the paper. And then I'm going to make sure that it's evenly wet all over. Although we're going to use the cling film, what I don't want is to get massive pools of water on the paper. So I think that's had long enough. So I'm just going to go over it again. A little bit more water. And all I'm doing is making sure that it's wet evenly, especially these little bits in between um, the leaves and uh, the petals and things if they're open. If they're not properly wet, what will happen is when you apply your paint, you'll end up with hard edges where you don't want them or areas that have no colour. As always, I'm going to start with the lightest colour, which in this case is the orange. And I'm just going to encourage the orange to sort of blur down into it. I'm using the side of the brush, not the tip, just the side of the brush to apply it. I'm going straight into my burnt sienna and I'm allowing that to sort of bleed out, especially towards the bottom here. And then I'm going to pick up some of the ultramarine blue. I have not cleaned my brush once. I'm just telling you that now so you know. Where the ultramarine blue mixes with the orange, it will create um, quite a grey colour. So you don't have to worry too much about it. I'm going to pick up some of the dark green. And allow that to bleed in. And down here, I think I want... A bit more of the brown coming up underneath and a little bit more of the dark green it'll just give it a slightly muddy looking color down the bottom here the top is a lot lighter if you think it's too light clean your brush the first time i'm cleaning it clean your brush pick up some more of the orange but you need to be working quickly so i'm just dropping this in And uh, I'm quite happy with that. I think I might add a little tiny bit more of the blue into this area. I just want it to be quite, quite nice and dark behind it. That'll do. And straight away, I'm now going to grab my cling film, keep it open and place it over. Now, you can see straight away that the cling film is dragging the paint and making patterns on it and you can play with it generally i'd recommend you just leave it so what i do tend to do though is to squish it around and encourage it to make these little patterns now because it's still wet underneath what's happening is the paint is being sucked into and along the ridges that the cling film are making so i am um, 
now going to begin to dry it. I'm just using a hair dryer. If you've got time, you can just go make yourself a cup of coffee, but bear with me because it will be noisy. I can't avoid that, I'm afraid. <laughs> So as I'm drying it, it's pushing the glare bubbles, which again add to it, make their own shape. is that the paint will backfill into the areas and leave it. It may still leave patterns, but it's probably not going to do what you want. So I'm going to peel this back slightly, see what patterns we've got left. Here we go. Look at that. How, how great is that? It just creates this really nice background. And now I'm going to finish drying that off so that we can move on with the next bit. <laughs> Some people are really posh and clever and they can put the volume on, turn it off and everything else. I am uh, I'm not one of them, as I said before. I'm slightly techno-challenged, so there you go. Anyway, this is dry now, so we can remove the masking that we've got on. I'll try and do it a little bit carefully, just in case there are any areas that are still a little bit damp. Sometimes you can get a grip on it and give it a good pull and it will all come off. Sometimes you can't. It's just one of those things. The time it won't is the time that you maybe try to go in too soon. The reason I'm using my finger is that it's sensitive enough to respond if I can feel that the paper's actually pulling rather than the masking. Whereas the eraser, although I do prefer it, because we're not really giving this time to dry, it means that the eraser could potentially damage the surface of the paper. So I'm just going to just push into the bits that I know is dry and then sort of pull it off. It is quite, um, I don't know, it's like people that, one of these things, this is why I don't wear nail varnish. It only stays on my nails for about two minutes before I start scraping it all off. It's it's a bit therapeutic for me. This one down here. I've got some nice little shapes. But yeah, the really important thing, make sure the paper is properly dry. So 
also this one has got a couple of areas where the masking hasn't left me with the best shape i'm going to go back and deal with that in a second i think i think that's pretty much all off tiny bit in the middle there so we're good i'm going to go in with a, an ordinary eraser and make sure that if i've got any pencil lines that are interfering with what were the masking lines that i take them out now um i'm reliably informed by many people that they succeed in removing pencil lines after they've painted i, I have no idea how they do that because it never works well for me so anywhere that I didn't want pencil lines that showed through after I removed the masking, I've now removed it. So we've done with that bit. So the next step is, as always, we're just going to go back in and um, paint our flowers. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush. I'm going to do the petals first. And oh, shall I just go in? I'm just going to go in this time with a little bit of blue, actually. It's still got a grey tint to it, but it's more on the blue scale. Purely because of the background colours. So, touch that here. So, I'm going to go up here. And this side here for sure. Damp brush. And if you've got any areas like here that are a little bit wiggly, all I'm doing is using my brush to try and smooth that edge down a little bit. It does mean you might get a bleed on the colours, but it's not the end of the world. So there. This middle one, soften that area in. And then this one on this side. Again, this is my first layer with it. So I'm not unduly uh, bothered. I'll be putting some detailing in afterwards. Again, I'm going to stick with this being the darker side. A lot of the time we talk about things having a darker side and it, it's not strictly speaking true but just to make life simple we'll go with that this one behind that petal and up there damp brush Just using a damp brush really on this one. And this side is slightly darker. Just doing it nice and quickly. This one down here, same process. Blend that away. But for this darker side here, blend that away. And then this one, keeping it a little bit lighter. So I've got I've got a base on all of those now. Straight away I'm gonna go and um, do the top areas. So I'm still using the same mix of colours, which is the lemon yellow, sap green and some ultramarine blue in this. So just now I've just picked up my lemon yellow. Again, be a little bit cautious with the thickness of your mix. You don't want this to, to bleed back into your flower too much. A little bit won't hurt. This one's got a very thin stem, which will have to thicken up as we paint. So that's done, going straight in to pick up some sap green. I'm 
No. I'm not going to worry about how thick or thin my stem is. And then straight away, I'm picking up some of the um, ultramarine blue. I've tried to keep these simple by not not changing over where where we consider the lights and the darks to be so hopefully that just makes it a little bit easier for you and i'm just going to let that uh, let that do what it's doing next one and to keep this nice and Nice and quick. If you need to swap down to smaller brushes, don't um, don't hesitate to do that. I'm okay with this size. This is my number six. So, but if you need to go to a smaller brush or you feel like you haven't got enough control over it, then then just change brush sizes. The thing is, all artists have their own preferences of even down to individual brushes. I, I've got a few that I really love and I've got a couple, sometimes very expensive brushes that I really don't like much at all. So go with your personal preference. Don't, um, don't slavishly follow what somebody else does. If you feel that you need a... Um, a smaller brush then then use a smaller brush the only time i'd say to be very careful is when you are putting washes on because in general when you're doing a wash time is uh, important and if you're using a tiny little brush that's only got two hairs then your paper's going to be dry before you get anywhere near ready to finish doing your wash so Use the biggest brush you can comfortably use. But when you're doing more detailed stuff like this, yeah, swap brushes. Move down to a smaller one if you need to. There's absolutely no reason not to. So here, just putting, and I'm, because this one's lower down, and I can tell that it would be in shadow from other things, I'm just adding in a little bit more colour. I'm also doing more of the sap green than the yellow. So this will just have a slightly different tone. Obviously with the others, we've put the lemon yellow on first. So the tone will be slightly different because on this one, we've just gone straight into the sap green. And um, now I'm adding in the ultramarine blue. So I've got my light area in this one more towards the middle than, than either side in particular. And I'm also using a darker mix. Just darken that one down a little bit down here. So that's good enough. Right, so back into my foliage, my leaves and things. So this one, a nice big one, just in this is under here just be careful again this is down to not having too thin uh, too runny too much water in your brush or too much water in your paint so i'm just dropping that in there straight away i'm going for the sap green i'd like to get this in before it's too dry so i'm catching underneath there catching up here my ultramarine blue mix. A little bit more shadowing under there. And down the bottom here. And the same with this one, it goes underneath this petal here. So it will have a bit more of a shadow. And then I'm just going to pull a little bit through here at the top. Damp that, dry it off a bit. So there we go with those. Encourage that to run back a bit. Lemon yellow. It's 
some sap green. Keep your tissue handy though, because you'll be needing it. You'll be popping in and out. This one, this one again is um, got a twist in. I do, I do really like having twists in um, Snowdrop leaves because when you see them growing, they're dancing all over the place, literally. I've got that sap green. And a little bit of this now. This area under here will have some darks in it. There we go. Back to. Oh, I'm just going to go into some sap green now with a bit of the lemon yellow in it. This one and this one, they're quite big leaves, so I can afford to be a bit bolder with them. Straight in there, straight in with the sap green. They're wet, so they're blending. I'm just going to put sap green into this one. Here's my ultramarine blue. Now this one is underneath or behind a lot of the other things. So I'm going to put a little bit more colour in. That one's still a little bit damp. Because they lower down, they're not going to have, unless you're standing in front of them, shining a torch at them, they're not going to have bright light hitting them. So it'll be a little bit darker down the bottom here. So we've got that. Again, I'm going to pick up some of my burnt sienna. We've got some in the background, so it's fine. I'm doing this on a fairly dry brush. And um, just pulling these little bits of it down. In places, it's overlapping these. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just pick up some more of that sap green here. And just use it on the edge of the brush so it's just making these little little random shapes down here a few little pulls and then I think we're pretty much ready to just put in a few little bits of detailing up there And uh, that will do. So back to my detailer brush, the double zero, and picking up a little bit of the ultramarine blue. I'm sticking with that this time. Just going to put a slightly more noticeable edge under there. Use a little bit to pull down the top and create some of these marks. And emphasize that a little bit. Pull these up. And I'm just incorporating that bit there. Soften this back in. Just want it there, I don't want it to be um, I don't want it to be dragging your attention to it. It just wants to be there just to give that a little bit more shadow at the back. This one would do the same. A little bit darker on the blue. Damp brush. Now this one will be a little bit darker, so I'm just going to leave that like that. Let's add a little bit more in here. And then for that one, just using the tip of the brush, just going to pull a few little direction lines down. 
I keep coming up from the bottom. That's dry enough now. On to this one, same thing. A little bit of a blue right up under the cup. Just down there. Clean the brush off, damp brush. Blend it backwards. So you're blending it back onto that petal. And then a couple of little direction lines to do a couple coming out from here. And then this back one. Again, I'm going to emphasize that, uh, that shadow area there. Pull it back on itself. It's uh, one of those strange things with painting. You put it in to sort of pull it back out and give this a, a few angled sweeps so it makes it clear. This one, same again. Underneath the cap. a little bit down here a few little lines up from here just pull a few little down And then this one, oh, it's a little bit dark, let's not panic, there we go. Blend it away. Little lines there. And yeah, if you want to put some veining in that, that's fine. Let's just go. This one virtually has a vein anyway. This one. And uh, yeah, I'm quite happy to call that to completed so it was more about your background than anything else so hopefully you're happy with that enjoy have a play with the cling film and um, let me know how you get on like comment and please subscribe thank you